If you want to be more productive with Keynote, then stick around because I'm going to tell you exactly how you can do that using your Stream Deck. Hello, welcome to Take One Tech. My name's Alec, a recovering perfectionist and a professional geek. <laughs> and today we're talking about Keynote, an application that I use quite extensively, really, uh, and not just for its intended purpose, which is for creating presentations. I also use it for creating, well, I use it for creating icons for Stream Decks, <laughs> for one thing. And uh, I'll leave a link to a video I did all about how to uh, do that up in the top right corner. I also use it to create my overlays and things like that, uh, animated overlays, lower thirds and, and whatever, for Ecamm Live as well. So uh, it is a really versatile program. And as I say, I do use it quite heavily. So uh, I wanted a way to speed up my workflow a little bit because there is there are lots of uh, menu items and things like that within uh, Keynote. And there are lots of processes or lots of uh, tools rather I should say that I use quite regularly and so I wanted a way to be able to activate those from my stream deck so let's jump just straight away just jump into <laughs> Keynote uh, tripping over my tongue there <laughs> and let's have a look at uh, the sorts of things I'm talking about so I've just got a blank slide up here um, there's various different things you might want to do like if you're creating I don't know, some image or something like that then you might want to add in a shape so we need to come up to the top here click on a shape maybe we want to add in a square like this uh, change the color of it maybe we want to punch out a hole through the middle obviously this is just totally nonsense and made up random stuff that i'm doing here uh, but we need to do like that then let's say we want to punch that hole out of the middle of that shape in the middle uh, then we would need to highlight both shapes then we would come up to the format menu uh, and then shapes and lines and then we'd use this one here subtract shapes which would subtract the uppermost shape in the layers from the bottom shape uh, and speaking of uppermost uh, and bottom shape then if I come over to here and uh, add the, another couple in let's say we want something like that but actually now we don't want that on the top we want it on the bottom so we'd need to send it to the back so we could right click and then click on send to back uh, and it would go to the back then perhaps we want to have some text in there as well uh, and that text is perhaps a little bit too small so we maybe want to increase the size uh, so we can just press command and the plus key to increase the size of the text a little bit. Uh, you get the impression I'm just basically making things up totally here. Just to show the, the fact of there are lots of little tools and things like that that you use as you are going about creating whatever it is you're creating, whether it's an icon, a slide or an overlay or whatever it happens to be. Um, then you get into the sort of animation and things like that. So you might want to add an effect to it. Um, and then you want to see the sort of build order of your animation so you need to click down here to get this there's lots of different things that as I say I just use all of the time uh, now some of these do have built-in shortcuts so if I come to any menu as it is as is the case with any Mac application if you come into any menu uh, what you'll see is next to a menu item there is a keyboard shortcut so for some of these we've got keyboard shortcuts but for other ones like this shapes and lines menu for example uh, none of these have keyboard shortcuts assigned. So if we were going to be uh, using our Stream Deck to basically activate these different controls, it's fine where there is a keyboard shortcut, but where there isn't one, then we've got a bit of a problem. It's not a big problem. <laughs> it's easily solved. We need to assign a keyboard shortcut to those menu items. And there are a couple of ways you can do that. You can do that in the uh, Mac system itself, uh, in the uh, system preferences and keyboard settings. But you can also use a uh, free app, which is called Custom Shortcuts, which actually I did a video about. I'll leave a link to that up in the top right corner. Uh, and that basically makes it much easier to assign keyboard shortcuts to specific um, actions in the menu or to specific menu items. But you can also use Keyboard Maestro. So that is actually the route that I went in this case. And that's what I'm going to show you today. Because what I've done is if I come over to uh, another <laughs> screen sharing area, uh, this is my uh, my stream deck. And if I just come into this, this is basically a profile that I've created for uh, Keynote, which has got lots of different functions built into it. Uh, and there's actually 40 different functions that I've got there over two, uh, two pages. So uh, I'm going to show you how I did that uh, and then I'll give you a way to basically uh, get a copy of this at the end of the video as well. Uh, but it is quite simple to set up. A little bit labour intensive, <laughs> a little bit time consuming perhaps, uh, but there's nothing difficult intrinsically in actually doing it. So that's what I wanted to show you today. So if I'll come into Keyboard Maestro. By the way, uh, 
if you if you're not familiar with keyboard maestro i'll leave a link <laughs> to a video in the top corner that i did all about keyboard maestro because it is if you want to level up your mac productivity this is one of the places to start i would say it is uh, it's you can build up slowly with it and you can do some pretty amazing things with it and we're going to be using one of the most simple functions or basic functions that it it can offer but you'll see how this basically is going to uh, make things a lot simpler for us in our productivity with keynote so i'm going to come over now to uh, keyboard maestro and i'll just give you a very brief introduction because as i say i've got videos on this already um so here we've got uh, basically it's keyboard maestro allows you to create macros which are little snippets of programming that allow you to control various different things on your mac if you will uh, and we've got a few different groups of uh, macros down this side uh, in these folders uh, in this column we basically have uh, the actual macros themselves so this is a little demo group of macros that i created on my one of my previous keyboard maestro videos these are the little macros themselves which do different things uh, and then over on this panel here this is basically what the macro is doing and some of these are simple uh, like this one uh, and some of these are more complex like this one which basically once it's triggered is going to do all of this whole string of different actions uh, so we want to do something quite simple which is basically we just want to trigger one of these menu commands in keynote so I'm just going to pop back to Keynote for a moment uh, and we can give uh, an example of what we might want to do. So let's say we want to use the get, grab a shape. Say I'm, I'm always drawing squares, <laughs> for example, in creating things, which is not too far wrong, actually, because I do tend to create things that are, you know, with graphics where I'm just sort of building them up out of different uh, components from this little shapes menu here. Uh, so we can activate it from there by moving the mouse and dragging it down uh, to the, uh, the right shape. But we've also got it in... In here so if I go into insert uh, and then down here we go to shape and you can see that down here we've got a rectangle or a rounded rectangle and all the different sort of standard shapes so in fact let's just take a, a rectangle shall we uh, so if we look at where it is in the menu it is in the insert menu and then we come down to shape and then it is their rectangle so basically what we're going to do is in keyboard maestro we're going to uh, have an action which basically triggers that menu command so i'm going to come down to keyboard maestro and i'm going to create a new macro uh, just like this and let's call this one uh, rectangle like that if i can spell it right reaching past my microphone can't type properly <laughs> rectangle and then i've put, just put keynote just so that we know what it is now i'm going to add an action here uh, because we could add a keyboard shortcut but what i'm actually going to do is ultimately i'm going to link this to my stream deck so we don't actually need to give it a specific trigger like a keyboard shortcut we can just leave that one blank for now because we'll activate it from within stream deck next we come down to the action which is what action is going to happen when we trigger this macro so i'll come down to the new action here and there's all sorts of things you can do here and again i explained it all in the other video so i'm not going to go into all of the different actions but specifically what we want to do is just select a menu item so there is a macro which is in here called select or show menu item uh, in fact there it is it's just highlighted it down there select or show a menu item so I'm going to drag that in there or double click it. So now it is going to show a menu item uh, and now it defaults to in the front application, which is the application, which is obviously the active application. Um, you could leave it like that because presumably you will be using this whilst you have Keynote open. Uh, however, just to be sure, you can come down here and just select Keynote from the menu there. So now that is basically going to be looking for menus within Keynote. So what we're going to do here is you can see we've got the menu title. Uh, and then the menu item so the menu title in our case would be uh, if we just pop back to keynote for a moment uh, over here <laughs> uh, the menu item would be the uh, the menu title would be insert uh, and then the sub menu would be shape and then the actual uh, menu item itself was rectangle wasn't it so i'll just come back down to keyboard maestro uh, but they do make it easier for you because what you can actually do is click on this menu item and it will open up uh, in fact let me just make that a bit smaller so you can see if i click on this menu here it actually opens up a list of all the applications and we've got keynote uh, and i can scroll down here for insert uh, and in fact that's just cutting that off even more for you <laughs> uh, you'll have to excuse my stream deck stream deck window open underneath so you can see i come into this menu 
and I come down to Keynote, which is the application. Uh, and by the way, this will list all the applications that you have open. So uh, if the application you're trying to program isn't open, then you won't be able to do this. Uh, so just need to make sure it is actually open at some in the background. Uh, and if this list is too long, you might want to just close down some of your other applications. In fact, I don't know why mail is open while I'm recording, but never mind. Uh, so then we come down uh, to here to insert, uh, and then we've got shape, and then, whoops, still just off the screen, that top one is rectangle. So if I click that now, uh, you can see that that has basically populated this area here. So its menu title is insert, the sub menu is shape, and the menu item is rectangle. And that is it. We've now got a keyboard maestro shortcut for uh, a rectangle. Okay, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to come over to uh, my stream deck and I'm going to come into my little demo profile. I don't actually know what's in here. Oh, <laughs> there we go. Oh, I think that was when I was demonstrating pages, uh, but there we go. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a keyboard maestro key here. Now I've talked about this before, but there is a keyboard maestro plugin for the uh, stream deck uh, and you'd be uh, forgiven for thinking that this was the best one to use. However, there is a bit of a better plugin which you can use to operate the keyboard maestro, to trigger keyboard maestro macros. Uh, so there is the keyboard maestro one, uh, but there's also this one which is in under this custom menu which is called KM Link. And the way that you get this is you come over to your uh, Stream Deck store just up at the top corner here. And this will open up the store, come down to the plugins, it's always slow when I do a demonstration. Lightning fast any other time. <laughs> and what you want to search for is uh, KM link. And there it is. And so that's the one that you're looking for. It's got that sort of command symbol. So download that one. Uh, and this one makes it really easy to trigger keyboard maestro actions. And all you do is you come into the custom uh, plugins menu here and you've got KM link. And so you just drag that across uh, and now what you do is this will come up with a uh, macro. You can give it a title. So if I want to call it rectangle like that, uh, and then you select a macro and then you come down to, it's actually got the last modified macro. So if you just created one, then uh, you just need to click on that specific macro. It will come up there. You can see the last modified one. Um, or you just go down and search for it in the list and you'll find them all in there. So there we go. I've just uh, created that one and then you'd obviously give it a nice little icon uh, for your button. But now if I come back over to my uh, <laughs> my other screen, I've got to get out of this profile for a moment <laughs> and come back to that one. <laughs> Lost my way a little bit there. There we go. And now what I need to do is come back into that little demo profile on my stream deck. Uh, and if I press that button, so I'm going to press the rectangle button, there we go, it's just put a new rectangle in. I can press it again, and we've got another one, press it again, as if by magic, it's just populating this and putting in more and more rectangles. And I can press the button as many times as I want to create as many rectangles as I want. So that means that uh, now uh, I don't need to go and have a custom shortcut because bear in mind, as every keyboard shortcut that you use uh, sort of takes that out of action to be used as a global shortcut uh, for other applications. So uh, just beware of that with using too many uh, keyboard shortcuts. Whereas doing it this way with Keyboard Maestro means that we are still activating the, uh, uh, where was it here? the shape, <laughs> the rectangle, but you can see we've not basically tied up any keyboard shortcut. So that is a benefit of doing it uh, this way. Now, uh, wouldn't it be great then if uh, we could have all of these uh, different actions in all of these menus uh, to make us be able to fly through our presentations? Well, fortunately, I've got you covered on that because what I did was I went through and uh, if I just bring Keyboard Maestro back for a moment and then switch to this view, uh, I've actually created a Keynote uh, folder uh, and I've got all of the sort of commonly used um, actions uh, to create slides with uh, and I've created actions for them all and so there you go, Keynote, Align, all these sorts of things uh, and then what I've done is I've created then a, um, oh by the way, with Keyboard Maestro you can actually export, so if you come into, uh, I'll just show you how to do this, if you click on a folder and then you go to export macro group, it exports it as a single file. So then you can basically just share that with somebody else and they would be able to load it into their keyboard maestro. 
So what I've done is I've actually created a uh, keyboard maestro, uh, sorry, <laughs> I've created a keynote uh, set of icons, which uh, looks something like this. Uh, and there's actually 40 of them over two pages uh, of a profile. Uh, and then I've also created a profile in the uh, sort of standard size stream deck as well. Uh, and I've made these available on the store of my uh, website. So uh, just quickly where to find those. If you go over to uh, takeonetech.io slash store, uh, and then you'll find it just there right at the top next to my Zoom icon pack, which you may be interested in as well. <laughs> uh, but what I'll do is I'll just run through quickly uh, what icons are there and the functions that they give you in, uh, in, in Keynote. So let me just come back to Keynote for a moment. And uh, there we go. We need to get back to a different scene, don't we? <laughs> there we go, which was, uh, I believe, uh, this one. So I've created a scene now where basically you can see what I'm doing with my uh, stream deck. And you can also see the stream deck. Uh, <laughs> you can see my mouse. So I'm going to point to which of the uh, specific uh, icons that I'm using. And then also you'll be able to see on the stream deck the effect that it is having on the, uh, the slides themselves. So I'll just drag this over this way a little bit and then I'll create a new slide and you can see what, uh, what actions I've uh, created basically. So I'm going to come into my, uh, my keynote uh, profile. Uh, it's quite a lot on the screen there, <laughs> having looked at it. So I'll just run through basically what all of these different things are on the uh, on the on the, the stream deck. So we've basically got. In fact, let me just change the the color of this. Just one second. I'll change the color of the slide just so it's something a little bit easier to see what's going on. Change that to gray. So the first one I've got up in the top corner is a uh, square. So that's just going to put a square on the screen. Uh, I'll move that over here. Then the next one is a rounded rectangle and circle. Then we've got the triangle, the right angle triangle and isosceles triangle. Whoops. And that is to play in full screen, which I actually don't want. <laughs> so uh, that next button along was to play the, uh, the slideshow in full screen. So that's this one. But then you might also want to play it in a window, which is what I use with Ecamm Live. So if I press that one, it's now basically playing the whole scene in a whole uh, slide, rather, slideshow in uh, the window. Uh, the next one along is uh, if you've got different uh, different items, then you can lock them. So there is a lock and an unlock. So you can see once they've locked, then you can't move them around. So if you want to lock things on screen, that is how you do it. And then you can click on them to unlock them again. So we've got a lock and an unlock button. Next here, we've got uh, these nine here basically are alignment tools. So uh, if you've got different shapes like this, uh, there's different ways that you might want to align them. In fact, let me just make them like this. It sh shows it a little bit better. So if I make a few different shapes like this, and then what I want to do is put that one there and this one here, and I'll just make these slightly different sizes so that you get the impression of what I'm trying to do. So there's different ways that you might want to align these. First of all, you might want them centered on the vertical axis. So if I just highlight all three, then I've got this, uh, this button here, which centers them on the vertical axis. And you can see it's just brought them all into line. Uh, you might also, you can see now that basically I've got this one is further away from the middle one than the bottom one is. The gap here is smaller. So you often want to distribute them evenly as well over the, uh, the vertical axis. So that is where this one down here comes in. We've got this little distribute vertically. And now you can see that that has made those all nicely uh, lined up. You've also got the same for uh, horizontal as well. So if I just do the same with these things, and let's say they're not quite lined up. You might want to line these up in the horizontal axis. So we've got the same to line up horizontally here with this button. Uh, and then you might want to distribute those horizontally as well using that one. So these basically, these nine to, uh, here are all different alignment things. So just coming back to these three as well, you might want to align them left or right. So those are what these buttons are for here. This one <laughs> aligns them left and this one would align them uh, right. Whoops, Daisy, I've uh, clicked on the wrong thing there. Um, one second. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there we go. So th that button is basically aligning uh, either left or right. 
Uh, then we've got some for shapes. So I do a lot of things where I need to uh, maybe add shapes together. So here we've got two distinct shapes and maybe one of them might be a different color, for example, just to show that they are distinct shapes. Uh, now, if you want to join shapes together, there are different ways that you can sort of make them into one. You can either uh, unite them so that they become one whole shape that is the sum of basically all of the space that they're currently taking up. And that is this one down here, this icon. Uh, so it, this is the unite tool from the uh, menu. So if I click on that one, I need to make sure I've got both elements selected uh, and then I click on that one you can see it's joined them together and that now is acting entirely as one uh, shape just as the others were so you can manipulate that it is now effectively one uh, entirely new shape the other thing that you can do is if you've got two shapes like this uh, and you click on uh, both of them uh, then you can also basically uh, subtract the topmost shape or shapes from the bottom shape in fact let me just show you with an example with more than one component so I'm going to just bring this to the front a minute so let's say I've got this shape here and then this and this and then I want to basically just uh, punch out the uh, the two blue squares from the yellow one so then I would use this uh, tool here which is going to knock those two shapes out and you can see it's just basically it's like imagine it like a cutter cutting through the bottom shape so uh, that's now given us this shape the next uh, one you can use is uh, if I drag another shape over like this uh, you might want to um, only use the part where there is an intersection with another shape. So let's say I'll bring this here. Uh, you'll see what's going to happen in a minute. I want to include only, if I come and look down at these, only the part where these two shapes overlap. So if I press that button, when I've got both shapes <laughs> highlighted, if I press that one, then it's uh, just given me left me with the place where they overlap. Or another thing that you might want to do is basically unite two things, but you exclude the place where they overlap. So in that case, if I come to here, then you've got this one. So hopefully those icons that I've created are pretty clear as to uh, what they are doing. They sort of symbolize uh, how those, uh, those, those different shapes are going to affect each other when you cut them out. Uh, the other thing that we've got here is some grouping as well. So uh, you can actually just group shapes together. So if I drag these three here, for example, you might want to group those all together. So if I highlight them all, then there's this little group tool just down here and that they are now acting as a group. So it's not the same before as when you unite them and they become one shape. This is still a, uh, a group of individual shapes. Uh, and then we can use the ungroup uh, tool here to ungroup them and then we can move them around again. The other thing that you might want to do is flip things on uh, one or other of their axes. So if you highlight this one uh, and then we come back down to the uh, stream deck, I've got these two buttons here that basically uh, flip the uh, the uh, uh, the object <laughs> either in the vertical or the uh, horizontal pane, uh, ho vertical or horizontal plane <laughs> like that. Uh, and then also we've got uh, on this page uh, some things to basically order shapes. So you can have things either at the front or the back. So I'll come to there. Let's say we've got these three shapes. So now you can see the blue shape, the blue triangle is behind the uh, the yellow shape and the green is behind both of them because it's disappearing behind both. Well, you can bring things either forward by one level or you can make them jump right to the front or right to the back. So also on the stream deck, there's these uh, four along here, which basically either send things forward by one one level or backwards by one level uh, or make them, as I say, jump to the front or the back. So if I click on this one, uh, you can see that that is moving forward. And in fact, if you look on this side, you can see how it's moving up through the stack. And if I send it backwards, I can make it move back through the stack as well and if I press this one which is going to make it jump right to the front you'll notice on here it just jumps immediately right to the front or again I can send it immediately right to the back and so that is how you can basically manipulate where things are appearing in the stack on the uh, on the screen the next one that we've got also is uh, the instant alpha. So you can actually do instant alpha. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with how you do that in the uh, in preview uh, where you have the little magic wand and it can basically uh, you can add transparency to pictures. Well, let's say that we were doing one of our professional presentations and we wanted to add an image in, uh, but we needed to use the instant alpha tool. Well, if I just drag an image in. Uh, then we've also got the uh, the magic wand here and all I need to do is click on the magic wand uh, and then click into the area we want to eliminate and hold and drag 
and there we go click done or click enter and now we've just removed that background from our image next on the uh, the following page of the stream deck uh, i've basically got a few that are related to text and uh, one for animation so the text one first of all if we want to add in a text box we can do this in here normally you would come and drag up this text box from the uh, the top of the menu uh, but I've added in a button to the stream deck so we just simply click on the button and it will add some text in obviously we usually do our editing of text over here so uh, let's say uh, 300 it's got some large text uh, but sometimes when you're just sort of fine-tuning it you want to uh, nudge the size up and down so we've got these couple of stream deck buttons here uh, to be able to go plus or minus and as you can see it's just nudging that size of that text up and down and you can see it's incrementally moving it here as well next is the uh, justification of the text so if I've uh, got some text in here uh, on a couple of lines like that uh, whoops another line not sure that was right <laughs> so there we go We've got some text there at the moment you can see that text is centered but then these are obviously I'm sure you know what uh, justification of text is we can either send it to the left to the right to the uh, center or have it uh, justified as well so those are the uh, text uh, controls that I've added to the stream deck uh, and then finally the last thing is I mentioned before about animation and one thing I always find uh, found with the animation is uh, the build order is something that's quite crucial you need to know uh, what order things are happening in uh, if I just add a few random effects to here uh, and then let me just add a random effect to this one as well when you've got uh, different items that are uh, I've got animation on them then you need to come down to this area at the bottom for this build order uh, and then that is the build order window where you can decide what order the animation is going to happen in now what I always found out what I found was when I actually ran the animation in a either in window or full screen uh, whenever I came back to this this uh, this build order window always seemed to have disappeared on me for some reason uh, and wasn't sort of persistent on the screen uh, and I often needed to just call it up and didn't want to have to go in to activate it from here. So I've also added a uh, shortcut for the uh, the build order in there as well. Uh, so that is this one. And if I press that, it just pops up that build order window there. So that is basically a rundown of the icons that I've got in this icon pack. And as I say, it's available on my uh, store for $10. I'll leave a link in the description. Uh, and basically it the the steps that you would need to take if i just come over and show you what's actually in the download uh then that might make it a little bit easier to understand exactly uh, what you're getting and how uh, how much time it's actually going to save you <laughs> uh, so first of all let me come and share this part of the screen so uh, in the download there is a zip file and then once you open the zip file it's got all 40 of these icons um and they're all at uh, yeah, obviously all named as files have to be <laughs> but I've named them uh, uh, with a, uh, a logical uh, title which actually is related to obviously the um, the the the, uh, the action that they're intended to be used for so I've got a list of all of the different icons here and then I've got the action that they are intended for obviously you can use these for other applications if you want <laughs> for whatever purpose uh, you need them for uh, but I've also got here the application menu location as well so you can see exactly where the uh, menu location is because obviously I've uh, set this up to be used with uh, keyboard maestro um, but if you wanted to use a uh, create a custom keyboard shortcut yourself using uh, custom shortcuts the application that I mentioned that I linked to earlier in the video and in the description uh, then if you wanted to go and set those up yourself then you've got this as a kind of like cheat sheet so that you can see exactly which where the menu items are as well I've then got here the uh, the icon file name just so that you know what to look for if you're looking for a specific icon if you're going to update any stream deck icons manually then you'll be able to see what the uh, the file name is so you know what to uh, to look for as well as obviously the actual icon itself uh, and ac actually these uh, file names is also uh, are also what I have called the uh, the macros in keyboard maestro as well so it means that you can see exactly which macro to select if you were going to do any of this manually in your stream deck so uh, aside from the icons though and aside from this little uh, pdf which gives you a list of all the icons 
Uh, there's also a couple of other files. Uh, first of all, there is uh, two profiles. Uh, one is for the uh, Stream Deck and one is for the Stream Deck XL. So on the Stream Deck XL, which is what I was using, you saw how these are spread over two pages, uh, but they're in the Stream Deck. They are spread over, I think, four or five pages uh, of, uh, of one profile. Incidentally, if you haven't updated to the latest version of uh, Stream Deck software, then definitely do that because that enables the pages in profiles. Guess what? I did a video all about <laughs> the Stream Deck update. I'll leave a link to that up in the uh, top corner and in the description as well. Uh, and then the final uh, file that is in the download is here, which is the keyboard maestro uh, macro set. So assuming that you are going to use keyboard maestro, the uh, simple two-step process <laughs> to use to do this with is uh, well actually it's three if you've downloaded the uh, the files first of all go into keyboard maestro and i'll just show you how to uh, do this you're going to go into keyboard maestro and then down at the bottom where you've got uh, plus you're going to add a uh, folder in fact you're not going to do that <laughs> what you're going to do is you are in fact going to import you're going to import the macros. I had to. I've, I've got a confession to make. I had to just press pause on my uh, my ecam live there for a moment. <laughs> you're going to import them, and uh, what you're going to need to do for that is to go up to the file mem menu at the top. In fact, let me switch up to here, shall I? There we go. I'll bring that up here. You're going to go to file, and then you'll go to import macros safely, like this. Uh, and then when you do that, click on that. You want to go to the actual folder where your macro is that you've just downloaded. Uh, click on that one and click on open, and it will basically just import those whole, uh, all of those keynote macros into here. So then you'll have this list of all of these different macros that are going to be activating all of the different actions within Keynote. So once you've got that open, then what you want to do is just go over to the uh, the folder with the, uh, the download in. Uh, and basically then you're just going to uh, double click on the, uh, the, the profile that you want, so either the Excel or the standard one. Or if you go over to your Stream Deck, <laughs> you can do it from within there. So click on the, uh, the little cogwheel here at the top. Uh, and then come to this and then if you click the little down arrow here you can go to import uh, and then there again you can just import your profile uh, so if you come down to here you'll see your stream deck icon pack is here uh, and then you can select uh, either the excel keynote profile excel or keynote profile and then that will import those uh, those into uh, uh, to your Stream Deck and then you'll have them all there ready to go and they should just work because they'll be triggering uh, the uh, the keyboard maestro triggers. Of course, as I mentioned, do make sure that you've also got that actual action for the uh, KM uh, link uh, installed as well on your Stream Deck. Uh, so once again, the place to find those is at takeonetech.io slash store and that's where you can find the uh, the icon pack on there uh, and then also yeah, check out some of my other icon packs if you so wish. So I hope you found that useful and uh, regardless of whether you use my icon packs, uh, I hope you can see how it's quite easy with uh, Keyboard Maestro to actually be able to trigger actions in other menus and this obviously extends not just to um, uh, not, not just a keynote but any other application where you want some specific menu item that's maybe hasn't got a keyboard shortcut or something like that uh, then this is a great way to do it so i hope you found that useful and if you did find it useful uh, don't forget to like subscribe uh, leave me a message as well because i do love getting uh, messages from you all and uh, if you've got any issues with it let me know and i'll be sure to try and find a solution for that as well uh, so that's all for uh, this video but don't go anywhere because there are some more great videos coming up next and i'll leave a link to some of my keyboard maestro videos over on the right hand side so until the next time have a great day